Today's topic is what happens after divorce papers are served in New York. And if you have watched our video that we did before on how long does a divorce take in New York, so you're watching this one. If you haven't watched the other one, go ahead and watch that. And uh, David Traster, who's a family law attorney and a real estate attorney, and we're talking about divorces in relation to real estate. So this subject today is what happens after the divorce papers are filed. Yeah, what happens? I want to know. <laughs> so David, welcome. Sure. Again. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. So we talked last time about the initiation of the lawsuit. A party goes and files for divorce. They serve their spouse. Now what happens? So if the spouse has been served in person in New York State. They have 20 days to respond and file their answer to the lawsuit in court. If they've been served outside of New York, 30 days. Or if they've been served by mail, there's a couple of exceptions when that's allowed. And then, so the clock starts, usually that party will reach out to an attorney and draw a typical call is, hey, I've gotten served by my spouse, I need an attorney. So we'll talk a little bit about the divorce process and then once they retain us, we have to file an answer in court. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. We could file an answer and that's basically it. A lot of times, well, maybe the defendant has a counterclaim against the plaintiff, right? It's, we talked about how divorce is like any other lawsuit. So if, let's say, the wife is suing the husband, may want to sue the wife in return, which is, sounds silly in divorce. Why? What's the point? But done as a practice, and sometimes that's what's done. And so once the answer or counterclaim is filed, it depends. So if they file an answer, that kind of stops this procedural timeline. If they file a counterclaim, and then the first party has 20 days to file their answer to the counterclaim. But eventually this process stops. And then we try to see what we could do. As attorneys, we know that 99% of the cases settle. So a lot of times we'll try to start negotiations right after this procedural stuff that needs to be done within a certain amount of time. And in New York, there's something called a net worth statement. In New Jersey, it's called case information statement. So they call them different names, but it's basically the same kind of document. Both parties disclose all their financial and their bank accounts, their property, their 401ks, their else that what property they believe is premarital and is outside the divorce if they have it. But it's a disclosure. It's made under oath. It can be used in court. And we use it to kind of, let's start trying to figure out how we could settle. That's great. It doesn't work all the time. So eventually the court will schedule a conference. Uh, and it's called a case management conference. So the judge will have the parties in. He will speak to them for five minutes and say, okay, where are you guys with exchange of financials? Okay, I'm giving you two months to exchange financials. I'm giving you another one month to try to reach a settlement. Come back in three months and tell me where you are. And that's a very typical kind of response. And then we go down this road and uh, the courts, every hearing, the courts are like, why haven't you settled yet? And we have to explain to the judge why we haven't settled. And the judges, sometimes you appear once or twice, they're okay with it. The more you appear and the more you say we haven't settled, the more aggravated the judges get. I feel like it's almost everything is leading towards uncontested divorce. <laughs> it's like you, now you have two attorneys, court, judge, just to get you to come to the same place where you could have done on the onset. Because, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the information that I was able to just gauge is that when it comes to divorces, marital property is going to be a marital property. It doesn't matter who actually went to work and did that. And everything has to be split 50-50. And we're not even getting the kids involved yet. But 
Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about the family home, right? Because we are talking sure. about getting divorced and owning real estate. So we'll start with a family home. And we mentioned that we did a video about who gets the house in a divorce. So guys, make sure that you watch that video next. So it's almost like two adults, and I know it's going to sound silly, but two adults acting like children. And now you need to hire people that you have to pay just to get you to do the right thing. You're absolutely right. A lot of times it's that. It's how can I take my client by their hand, physically bring them to the table to resolve this matter? Because for me as an attorney, these things are, let's get this resolved. This is the issues before us. Let's get them solved. For people, it's different. The people are involved. Aside from the financial aspect, which is mostly what divorce is, if we take away the kids and custody, which is a, an important factor, but a lot of times it's about the financial split and the finances. But the problem is that there's emotions involved. There's emotions that people carry from their relationship with this person, from their marriage to this person, from their hurt that could be cheating, it could be lying, it could be trust, betrayal, the, all of these feelings that prevent the people from actually moving forward with their lives. Some people, I have clients, unfortunately, and I'm sure every divorce attorney does, that get into this mode, I call it the victim mode, where maybe they've been wrong, and I'm not taking or defending the other side. I wasn't there, but there are some real pain that people experience in divorce, and I don't want to diminish that. But a lot of times that pain and that emotional state prevents them from wanting to even discuss things with the other party. Or as me and you have talked and in previous videos, marital property, like you said, marital property is marital property. It's going to be divided 50-50. But what if one spouse insists that I want 70 people? What are you supposed to do with that? Their attorney could tell them they're never going to get it in court. The judge could stand and yell at them for not settling and tell them you will ne never get this in court. I will not give you 70%. And they don't care. They don't care. And they're like, okay, let's move this forward. And a lot of times within this victim role, which I don't want to diminish because there is pain and hurt there. But at a certain point, some people begin to be the center of attention, right? Everybody's coming to them. Hey, why don't you agree? <laughs> Both attorneys, the judge, everybody, the mediators, and they don't want to lose that. All of a sudden, they're the star of the show. Everybody's coming to them and they want to continue this process where they're the star of the show. Yeah. Yes, you're correct. It's a lot of hand-holding. Right. So now all of this is going on and let's say that everybody lives in the house still, right? And here now one party filed and now the other party got served. So now they're aware. And I'm sure now you're wondering, what are my rights if I leave the marital home, right? After all this happened. So come join us on our next video. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell because you don't want to miss that one if you run out of time.